In this video, I'm going to be looking a little bit more at spontaneous emission of electromagnetic radiation. And so we're going to use this, uh, this technique called Einstein's A and B coefficients. And so we, if we uh, think of like a container of atoms that have uh, N sub A in the lower energy state, psi sub A, and N sub B of them are in the higher energy state, psi sub B. So this N sub A is a number, which is the number of particles or atoms in this lower energy state. And this N sub B is the number of atoms in this higher energy state. Then the number going from uh, psi sub B to psi sub A, so from the higher to the lower energy state by spontaneous emission, is this N sub B times A here, where this A is sort of what we're going to try and find uh, using this technique. So then the number going from the higher to the lower by stimulated emission is N sub B times this uh, B uh, uh, sub B A here times the density of states right here, where this B uh, sub B A here is equal to this that we found in the previous video. So the number going from the lower state to the higher state by absorption is now N sub A times this uh, times this B here, which is the same for uh, absorption as we found in the previous video, times the density of states here. And so the flux then is going to be given by this differential equation right here, where the change in the number of states in the, or the number of particles in the higher state is going to be equal to these, which are the loss of particles from the higher state, which is why they have the negative, and then this, which is the gain of particles into the higher state, which is why it is positive. All right, so if the atoms are in thermal equilibrium, then the number of each in each state is constant. And so this right here will be zero. So the change of, uh, of the number of atoms in the upper state with time is going to be zero. And so that gives us this right here. We do some algebraic manipulation and we will end up with this right here. So our density of states is equal to this A here uh, divided by this right here, which is N sub A divided by N sub B. Then this B sub AB minus B sub BA. And so from statistical mechanics, we know that the number of atoms with energy E sub N at thermal equilibrium and temperature T is proportional to the Boltzmann factor. And so we have this right here, the N sub A divided by N sub B. So we have the, uh, the A energy state here and the B energy state here. And we divide those, which uh, is the same as doing this right here. And so we get this E to the power of uh, the energy of B minus energy of A here, uh, divided by this Boltzmann constant times time. And so we the change in energy between the two states is going to be equal to this right here. And so we can then make that substitution right there. And so that ends up giving us this. So we're changing this, uh, this ratio right here to this right here, this exponential right here. Uh, so Planck's black body formula says that the, the uh, density of states is given by this right here. And so we can compare that to what we found right here. And we then know that uh, B of B, A sub B is equal to B of B sub A right here. And so that means uh, that uh, these have to be equal to each other. So uh, these two B right, these two B terms right here are equal to each other. And we also uh, can then make this uh, make this substitution here because we have uh, you know all of this stuff right here in the Planck black body radiation so we can just set that all equal to a right here and then we have it in terms of this uh, this stimulated emission right here 
so we can then uh, end up so we can do some algebraic manipulations and get that into this form right here so we therefore have the spontaneous emission rate in terms of the stimulated emission rate which we know from the last video was this so this was our rate of stimulated emission and so our equation for spontaneous emission rate is is going to be uh, this that we found here and then we're going to put this in for the B of B sub A and so we do some canceling of things and we end up with this in the red box here so this is our rate of spontaneous emission right here this is the rate of spontaneous emission and so if we know the rate of spontaneous emission then we can look at the lifetime of the excited state because how long the excited state lasts is going to be related to how fast spontaneous emission is occurring all right so if we have a population of atoms out of thermal equilibrium with them in the excited state uh, psi sub b then the rate at which the atoms undergo spontaneous emission and return to the lower energy state is going to be this right here so the change in the uh, the higher energy state is equal to this uh, negative a times the number of of particles or atoms in the higher state times this uh, this small change in time here and so if no atoms are going back to the excited state so we're saying that uh, all the atoms are only spontaneously emitting they're not absorbing anything uh, then the number in the excited state at some time t so following a time zero will be this so we have this from above uh, we do some manipulation we uh, take the integral here we end up with this right here with this plus c uh, we can uh, then just use the uh, the exponential or the exponent rules to get this so we get this constant right here and so we set that equal to our sort of initial number of atoms in the excited state and so we end up with this right here so this is the number of atoms in the excited state equal to the initial number of atoms in the excited state times this exponential decay here which we can then uh, make this substitution here and so that the uh, exponential decay and this is our time constant right here so one over a this is called the lifetime of the excited state which is the amount of time it takes for the initial value to go to uh, 0.368 times the initial value and so this right here would be uh, 1 over e which is 0.368 of the initial value so this right here is uh, a little bit more than a third of the initial value right there and so it's actually it's closer to like a a sort of half-life definition than it is to a uh, a actual lifetime of the excited state all right so if we have more than two states then the transition rates add and so this uh, time constant would just be uh, one over the addition or the sum of all the different uh, the different transition rates uh, for each of the different states into which the particle or the atom could uh, could move into and so uh, yeah the n is the number of states into which the electron can transition from its current state uh, but there are also selection rules and so this uses symmetry considerations and I've discussed this in other videos in this playlist and what we found was that uh, the change in the angular momentum here has to be either an increase or a decrease of one and the change in the uh, the uh, m here this m uh, quantum number can be either the same or it can be plus or minus one so you know if you're in like an m equals plus one state you can move into an m plus two an m plus one or an m uh, 
or an M0 state, where, say, if you are in like a plus 1L state, you can only move into a plus 2 or a 0L state. And so for a hydrogen atom, that looks kind of like this. So we have our, our N states over here, so the principal quantum numbers and then our angular momentum quantum numbers here. So this looks a little confusing, but the main thing to notice is just that uh, we don't have any sort of directly down transitions here because the L has to go either plus one or negative one. So it's always moving laterally over by one L uh, on here and uh, going down in N here. So that we're talking about spontaneous emission. So we're going down. But the same would be true if we were talking about absorption. We would just reverse the direction of all these arrows right here. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, the selection rules for the hydrogen atom there. And so some states, such as the N equals 2, L equals 0, which would be this state right here, we see that it doesn't have any decay uh, going on here. So these are called forbidden, uh, although that again is a little bit of a misnomer because you can have transitions uh, sort of going down from here to here, but uh, that occurs when we have interactions with other atoms or different thermal effects or multi-photon emission. Uh, but it is found experimentally that it takes longer to make uh, to make a transition that would be like from this n equals 2, l equals 0 to n equals 1, l equals 0. So they do take longer, but forbidden is, is a little bit of a misnomer there. All right, so we're going from a, so so kind of changing gears here. So we've been talking about sort of transitions here within an atom. So going from different states within an atom. So now uh, and we can sort of separate this here. We're going to talk about transitions from a state in an atom uh, into a continuous state, uh, which is what would occur, say, if there was ionization. So, you know, it, it the the particle, the atom, sort of absorbs electromagnetic radiation and it causes the particle to move uh, out of the atom. And so it's going into a continuous band of energy state. So that kind of looks like this right here, where we have this definite state here in the atom, uh, but then we have this uh, sort of continuous, uh, this continuous state. Uh, uh, levels of energy right there into which the particle or the electron can move. And so the probability for that is given by this right here, where uh, we have our omega sub naught here equaling the change in energy here. And then this is our density of states uh, times this uh, small change in energy. And so it's the number of states uh, within the energy between E and E plus DE. And so it's sort of the number of states uh, that we would have kind of in this small part of the, uh, the continuous band right there. Uh, and so we can make, uh, we can say that this rho, this density of states here is equal to this uh, density of states in our final state, which is uh, we have this line here sort of in the center there where the, uh, the E final is equal to the E initial plus uh, this amount of energy here. Uh, and at sufficiently large T, so sufficiently large amounts of time, we get this as the probability right here. And so when we evaluate that integral, we get this right here. So that probability based on time here. And so what we what the one thing to notice here is that this uh, the oscillatory behavior is gone from this, and so we don't have that increase and decrease over time of the probability of a transition. Uh, and so if we take the time derivative, so if we want to look at uh, you know how often this occurs, the the rate of transition, we take the 
time derivative of both sides. And so we can call this time derivative here the rate of going from the initial to the final state, so the transition rate. And then we take the derivative of this side here with respect to time. What we'll see is just that this, uh, this t right here drops off, and so we end up with this right here. And this tells us that the transition rate is proportional to this times this. And so this right here is our density of final states. And so again, it's the density of states, so it's the number of accessible states uh, where more possible final states means a faster transition because our rate of transition is proportional to this density of states here. Uh, this right here is just the matrix element, so similar to that uh, B that we were looking at above, uh, which has information about the transition from uh, the initial to the final state. Uh, and this is called Fermi's Golden Rule. And so the sort of main takeaway is just that the rate is proportional to the density of states. And so the more number of states that the particle or the electron can transition into, the faster that's going to occur. Uh, and that's actually true not just for uh, going into these continuous states, but actually for when we have discrete states. And so uh, if you have like an atom that has you know more states uh, in higher levels then you're going to get transitions to those states more quickly uh, and what you will actually notice with that is that if you're looking at the periodic table the transition metals sort of on the uh, sort of closer to the left side of the periodic table are going to have more open uh, states in higher energy levels. And so you're going to be able to promote those electrons to those higher energy levels uh, faster in those uh, transition metals further to the left, where the ones further to the right, those d orbitals are going to be uh, filled by other electrons. And so there are fewer energy levels that can, uh, that can be the electron can be promoted to in those ones, and so you'll actually see slower transitions, transition rates there. Uh, but anyway, that was what I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, <clears throat> the next video after this one is actually going to be the last video in this series uh, where I've been drawing from the Introduction to Quantum Mechanics by David J. Griffiths. Uh, so I'm going to do more videos on quantum mechanics after that, but uh, the, the next video after this one will actually be the final video in this series going off of this uh, introductory quantum mechanics book. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.